Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 10 of the simple series of my 68000 assembly programming tutorials. We're going to be looking at the Sinclair QL and we're going to learn how to read in the keyboard, the cursor keys on the Sinclair QL. Now, ironically, the Sinclair QL has external joysticks and they uh, actually emulate the keyboard and they use the cursors as well. So uh, this is actually effectively a joystick reading routine tutorial as well. Let's go over to the Sinclair QL and let's see today's example in action then. So here is the example. If I just select Sinclair QL here and we run this, this is the Sinclair QL example. Now what we've done here is we've taken the original simple series sample of the smiley, you can see it there, and now we can move it around the screen with the old cursor keys. So that's what we're going to be looking at today, cursor key reading and just a simple example of an object moving. Let's take a look at today's code. So first of all here, what we're doing is we are just setting up the screen into eight color mode and we're setting a starting X, Y position for our object. Let's have a look at the variables there. They're just here in the user RAM. So we've got two values for our X, Y position as words, and we've got the previous position. We've got a backup here, which we're using to restore the player's position. Now, an important thing to see here is this QL joy command. Now, this is a series of bytes that are effectively a command that we can send to the traps of the operating system, and it will read in the cursor keys for us from the keyboard. That's really the only way we can effectively read in the keyboard, unfortunately. So that's what we're doing here. That's going to be used later. You can see we've got our smiley. This is exactly the same as it was before. We've now got a blank version here, though and um, we're using draw player to show the smiley and blank player to remove the smiley. So there's two versions. Now, when our code starts here, we're setting a starting position for the player, and then we're gonna skip over the main loop of reading the joystick first because we've got an infinite loop here until the direction's pressed, but we want to show the starting position. So we're gonna skip over it first time. Now, when it comes to actually reading in the joystick, we're going to use trap one, command 17, hexadecimal 11 here, and that will, when we pass that QL command we saw earlier, this thing, that will read in the line of the keyboard, in this case, row one here, and that will be the cursor keys. So we are sending that here and it returns the value in D1 here. We're, we're moving it to D3 just to match the other code we're using. And we're using D1 and D2 here for the X and Y position of the player. So we're backing up the previous position of the player deleting the old sprite from the screen, and then we're processing each of these directions that were passed to us in the cursor key from the trap. And the trap's format is enter, left, up, escape, right, space, down. A little bit odd, that's the way it's working though. So up is effectively bit two here. We're testing that here. Down is bit seven and so on. We're testing all of these bits and we're moving the player position accordingly. So when we get to here, we've updated based on each of the directions. We're storing the new position of the player. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to test the position of the player to check they're still in a valid position on the screen. Now, 0, 0, is the top left of the screen, and we're using 16-bit values. So if we go off the left or the top of the screen, we're going to wrap around to 65535 and end up on the other side. Because of that, we're only checking the top values. We don't need to check the bottom values for these axes. We're doing that with these two compares here. And if the player's gone off the screen, we're resetting using the backup that we loaded in before, and that allows us to stop the player from going off the screen on all four sides. Okay, then what we're doing is we're drawing the new position of the player, and then we've got a little loop here just delaying key to keep the game from running too fast, and then we're jumping back up to here and starting the main loop again. And that's really all there is to it. It's not much of an extension from the previous example. It's just a bit of a pain reading in these joystick and keyboard things from the um, QL because of the traps here. Now, of course, you can use this routine to read in the entire keyboard if you wish. You would just need to change the row here. You, you'd need to run it multiple times for each row, but if you were doing full re keyboard reading, that would be what you would want to do. But for joystick cursor key reading, this is enough. So there we go. Well, that's all we're going to be covering today. We'll be coming back to this example in a more advanced form later on because we're going to be looking at a little game I wrote called YQuest. It's a Z80 6502 game, a bit like I did with Grime Z80. The YQuest will be coming and that is actually based on this example. So you'll see that this can be extended to be a full game if you so wish. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I hope you found it interesting. As always, you can get the source code on my website as well as the text documentation there. So yeah, please go ahead and do that if you think it'll be helpful to you. But whatever you do, I hope you enjoy your 68,000 programming and the Sinclair QL. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.